welcome to this short service of prayers, readings and reflection on life's journey. We gather near the place where St David found his closeness to God, knowing God best as Christians have through the ages as Creator and Sustaining Father, Redeeming Son and Life-Giving Holy Spirit. Here we may pray that we might also know God's closeness his compassionate love and his wise direction in our lives. So we begin with the collect, a special prayer, which recalls St David, who called others to be joyful, to keep the faith, and to be faithful in the little things of life. So let us pray. God our Father, you gave St David to the people of Wales to uphold the faith, encouraged by his example, May we joyfully hold fast to the things which lead to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honour and glory, now and for ever. Amen. And a reading from Luke's Gospel, Luke chapter 18. Two men went up to the temple to pray one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, was praying thus, God, God, I thank you that I am not like other people. I fast, I give. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even raise his eyes, but was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Now pilgrims who visit this shrine in St David's Cathedral might have as an intention to do some tidying up in their lives and their spirituality. They may want to get things in order. <clears throat> Heavenly tidying is often the object of our presence in church and at worship. But does that really work? All too often, we submit ourselves to the notion of restriction as an initial understanding of spirituality. After all, that is what we found ourselves being taught as children. There are far more don't do this or that restrictions in our education than do this freedoms to be. The latter gives us encouragement to explore life and live more messily as we need to acknowledge that God appears differently to different people. This is not necessarily the coherence of our spiritual or actual physical pilgrimage that we hope to seek for or find, but it is perhaps more true. In life as we live it, we know God is in the mess and similarly in the pains and injustices of life. The ways we live life differently may not add up as many would like to see. But these ways are the places in which we can find God with us. Now our faith is not a rules-based faith. It is so much more an artistic movement. As the 19th century Impressionist artists found when they first exhibited their pictures, they were ridiculed and condemned for not following the rules and not painting proper pictures. Their compositions and the execution of their pictures were truer and arguably offered a more accurate depiction of light in its changing qualities. And gradually the truth of their artistic endeavours rang true for others and their beliefs, which seemed impossible, now became possible. Professor Linda Woodhead, in her encouraging passages in Unknowing God, a book written together with the theologian Nicholas Peter Hardy, encourages us to think and live this way, to rewild God in our lives, if not to seek to allow God to rewild us. There can be a real exploration and discovery in this way of viewing our pilgrimage. Messiness, like differences, is not something to be overcome, but it is the very essence of life. We can feel enlarged in our living and thinking, and need not feel our faith threatened 
if we do not resist difference and messiness. So a pilgrim might come here feeling a sense of exile. The journey may have involved a crossing of a personal frontier. Returning home, there may not be the same sense of inclusion or belonging even that the pilgrim thought they once had. Sometimes that pilgrim may have to live the lost feeling of belief that they feel they should have retained. However, the fact of pilgrimage for them may enable them to give up the fantasy of belonging in a family which we felt, in which we felt safe and loved. Sometimes over teas on Wednesday afternoons, we discuss life here and some people believe that we might be living in a cathedral family. But no, I would suggest, we live as a fellowship because with all our messy selves interacting, any one of us, let alone us combined, can be too much for the institution that can be the cathedral life. There is no one true north for us together, just many points on the messiness of our various moral compasses. But pilgrims together in fellowship, we seek to explore our faith, perhaps just as Jesus did as he entered Jerusalem on Palm Sunday and travelled into Holy Week. Nicholas Peter Harvey rightly says that piety and devotion can be enemies of faith. Piety and devotion can all too easily cover and swamp faith and block our exploring. At times when I was teaching and travelling in Kenya and other parts of Africa, and at other times working on the land up a mountain in Spain, I found similarly to Harvey that I was perhaps more prayerful when I was not consciously praying. The journeys, the friendships, the work done often drew one into prayer, and I firmly found that prayer was a gift and not a practice. There was once a woman who was religious and devout and filled with love for God. Each morning she would go to church, and on her way children would call out to her, beggars would accost her, but so immersed was she in her devotions and her belief in correct daily observance that she did not even see them. Now one day she walked down the street in her customary manner and arrived at the church just in time for the service. She pushed the door, but it would not open. She pushed it again harder and found the door was locked. Distressed at the thought that she would miss the service for the first time in years and not knowing what to do, she looked up and there, right before her face, she found a note pinned to the door. It said, I am out there. Nat, our resident choral scholar, will be singing before the ending of the day.
Gracious Father, we come from within the complexity and tension of the world to be discovered again by the profound simplicity of your love made known in Jesus. In the world we have to prove ourselves, feeling the need to be obedient to some rules or other. We feel the need to show ourselves competent strong, able to cope, wise and clever. But the light of your love doesn't shine on us in that way. With you we know ourselves weak, foolish, sinful and helpless in the world. We may find ourselves like Jesus hanging on the cross. But this is where your power and wisdom begins to take effect. This is where we begin to see the light differently and we can begin to discover the truth about the messiness of the world and our place in it. We come to you needing the impression of strength and wisdom in order that we might meet life's possibilities and dangers. May we always praise you in our praying and in our living. So together let us pray the prayer given to the church in the version and language of our choice. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. And a prayer of blessing as you stay a while and enjoy this holy place. And do come forward for anointing, for healing and peace, if you so desire. Gracious God, awaken in us the zeal of your servants and David, that we may joyfully journey with you now and into Holy Week as we approach Easter, in singleness of heart. Let us go on our way with your strength, confidence, courage and hope. And may the blessing of our gracious God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. And live embraced by God with love and peace within you.